Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to my Godot Behavior Tree in Navigation Series Part 3. In today's video, we're going to add a new enemy class and we're going to start uh, using some of the navigation system to retrieve a path for the enemy to pathfind to our player. So let's jump in. So the first thing we need to do is add a new asset for our enemy. So Let's go back to your top-down shooter pack uh, from Kenny. If you don't have it or if you deleted it or something, you can just go into the link in the description and download it again. So we're gonna go into our top-down shooter pack and go inside PNG. And you can use whichever you want as your enemy. You can use robot or maybe soldier or zombie. In my case, I'm going to be using Zombie 1 Hold as our enemy. So let's just drag that one in and move that into your asset folder. Now, let's create our new enemy character. It's basically going to just be like our player character. So let's just come over here and click on the add icon and add another kinematic body 2D node. And we can rename this to enemy and then add a collision shape 2D and also give it a sprite. Let's come inside the collision shape 2D and wait, actually let's go to our sprite first. Okay, so let's grab our enemy uh, texture into the sprite over here. So we can see that our enemy has a sprite right now and also click on this to make sure we can select the children. Let's just drag it somewhere else. Okay, let's go inside the collision shape now and give it a new shape. We're also gonna just be using a new circle shape. And as you can see, it's also super small somewhere down here. Let's change the radius to something a little bit bigger 22 or maybe 24 oh oops or i think 22 is pretty good so yeah let's just keep it as 22 so now you have your enemy setup let's give it a script so come over here and click on this to attach a new script and we can call it enemy that's fine but let's move that to our scripts folder click open and create so the first thing of course let's give it a class name we just call it enemy let's define some variables that we need so let's come up here and the first thing we need to do is get our navigation 2d class so let's call it nav 2d and we can use a colon here to tell it what the type is so that the compiler can save some work on guessing. And we can just do get tree, get root, and then get node to get our navigation 2D node. So we'll need to do something like main slash nav. Let's just call it nav 2D here again. Let's go over here to rename that to nav2d so, so that it's just a little bit shorter. Okay, and another thing that we need is the player. So we can do basically the same thing. We can use control D, copy the whole line and just change these player. And because we name it player class, we can give it the, uh, the type as player and change the last part here also to player. So now we have our navigation 2D class and player class in our enemy script that we can access. So usually if I'm doing something like this, I would suggest uh, you have a preload singleton manager or some sorts so that they can provide a entry point or like an inter interface to access some of these uh, system wise class like navigation or maybe uh, a manager that allows you to query whether there's a player in the in the scene or there are multiple players and 
that kind of stuff. But in our case, uh, we'll just do this. Another thing that we're going to add to help us debug our navigation and path is a line 2D node. So let's go over to your scene, uh, your scene tree here, and just add in a new line 2D node to your scene so that we can give our path to the line 2D nodes basically and it will draw a path uh, it will draw a line on your screen basically indicating that path so that we can see whether it's actually doing as um, as we expected or not so we can also do the same here to get the line 2D node let's just copy that line and call it line 2D and this will be a line 2D node and let's go over here and also type in line 2D okay so in this way we will have our line 2D that we can access and another another thing that we need here is let's have a new variable to store our navigation path just call it nav path and this is going to be type pool vector to array and for testing purposes, we're just going to be testing this inside the ready function for now. So we can uh, assign a new path to our nav path. So like nav path equals to, let's call our navigation 2D system and get simple, wait, get simple path. So that would be self dot get global position. And the second point will be our target point. So it's going to be our player dot get global position. And now that we have our navigation path, we can assign that to our line 2D. So line 2D dot point equals to nav path and let's get rid of this line right now and also let's get a, get rid of these lines okay now we can uh, go into our game and give it a quick test and as you can see it's not working so there's an error here it says attempt to call function get global position based null instance on a null instance and we can see that our player line 2d and navigation 2d are all null we can't get them that's because when i copy the code from my reference project in here i forgot to also change the root node name over here so this is called node 2d instead of main so that's why it didn't work so we need to stop it right here so we either change this to node 2d or we, we can come over here and just change this to main. So that should fix it. Let's try again. Yeah, so as you can see, the zombie successfully retrieved a path to a uh, path find to the player like this. So it's just a path over here. And because we test that in the ready function, it's just gonna retrieve that path and draw it and that's it, it's not ever updating it so the next thing we're going to do is to actually make the enemy use that path that it found and to move to toward the player to do that let's go back to our enemy script and the first thing let's also give it a export var max speed and let's give it something slightly lower than our player so 150 i think that's good and let's uncomment our physics process. Oh wait, this is actually process. Let's change this to physics process and also get rid of this. No, get rid of the pass. And let's make a new function here called move along path. And let's pass in the max speed times delta. So this is how much distance it's going to move in a frame basically so our new function function move along path 
it's going to take in a parameter called distance. It's going to be a float. And this is going to be returning void. So basically just returning nothing. So the first thing we need to do is let's have a new variable called position. Let's store our global position in the beginning first. And now we're going to try to move the character along the path that we retrieved. So let's use a loop for that for I in range nav path dot size. Okay, we're gonna be first getting our distance to the next node in the path. And that's gonna be self dot global position and we can just use the distance to function and pass in another point so we're going to be passing in the first point of our nav path so like this okay now if that distance to our next node is oh wait actually if the distance that we move, that we want to move in this frame is smaller than our distance to our next node, then we then we know that we can move that distance and our next node is still gonna be the same. So I just move self dot global position equals to self dot global position dot linear interpolate. So we're just going to do a simple linear interp interpolation and it's going to be interpolating to nav path. So the first point and the percentage that we're going to move is distance divided by distance to our next node. Okay. And after doing this, we basically we finish moving and we can just break so it's going to break out of the for loop and the character will finish moving basically so to explain this a little bit more clearly let's take a look over here so let's say this is the player character that player starts here and this is our navigation path coming from the player to our first node well node zero and our node one and over here that will be our destination and let's say the distance to our first node which we were uh, calculating in our code let's say this is 100 and in this frame our max speed times delta time let's say that is 10 so we want to move this much along the path so we use linear interpolation so that will be interpolating between this node so our starting node and the first node in our path and we use 10 divided by 100 so that's 10 divided by 100 and it will interpolate that much so basically it'll just move the player character position to over here so by using that we will be moving along the path and we uh, in each frame we'll be moving forward a little bit and a little bit more until we reaches the first node. And once we reaches the first node, we'll need to do uh, some other handling for that. So let's go back to our code. If our distance is larger than our distance to the next node, we will need to, let's add a else here. We'll need to subtract our distance to next node from our distance so that our distance becomes smaller and we're just going to move our position we're just going to update that to our first point in our path now so in the next loop we'll start from this position and keep moving the character forward we're also going to be removing the first node 
to the node with index zero from our navigation path. And now we all, uh, we actually need to update here. This actually needs to use position instead of self dot get global position. Otherwise this will always be the same, no matter which iteration we are in the loop. We want to use the updated position here to calculate our distance to our next node in the path. So let's just update it here. So basically after we uh, subtract our distance to our next node, our distance becomes smaller. And then the next iteration, if our distance is now smaller than our distance to our next node, then we will calculate with uh, our updated path. So we also actually also need to use position here and it will, it will interpolate between the new updated position to our first node in the, in the navigation path and it will move the character forward. Okay, so let's give it a quick test. As you can see, the zombie did successfully move toward the player, but now it's just standing there because it's not updating the path and it's just going to stay there forever for now. That's it for this video. In our next video, we will download a behavior tree plugin and start working on our enemy behavior tree. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.